guys, my name is Shalena Battles. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. I am indie author of three books, The Man Before You, which is a contemporary romance, Soul Jumper, a paranormal romance, and Encampment, which is a young adult fantasy. Today I wanted to check in with the writing challenge. I'm failing again. Not really. I've written every day. So I'm happy about that, but I am behind on word count. Um, I posted an update on my TikTok as well, but we needed 31,923 words yesterday. I'm at 27,025 words today. So I've got a chunk um, <laughs> to get back to where I need to be. I'm hoping I get there today. Uh, I had to go to town yesterday. I live like 45 minutes out of town. Um, had doctor's appointments and stuff like that, so I wasn't gone a lot yesterday. Um, so I'm hoping today, being home, I can play catch up on this. So I will post on Instagram and possibly TikTok this evening or tomorrow morning, and we'll check back. We'll see where we're at. We'll see if we bridged that gap or not. That's a lot of words. <laughs> The other thing I wanted to talk about today was, how do I put this? Writing tips, but not necessarily like the actual writing part. Um, so not necessarily like tips for improving your writing or tips for improving character development or anything like that. I'm talking about tips to help you write more or write better um and I started thinking about this yesterday because I'm like okay well what really works for me especially now that I'm trying to do this challenge to get stuff done um the other thing I'm gonna do while I sit here I wanted to do this for a couple days I got the stickers I got these off Amazon that I'm gonna put in with the signed copies of encampment so I'm gonna put some of them on my water bottle. I've wanted to do it for a few days and I just haven't sat down and done it. So we'll do that too. Um, yesterday, everything that I like think about kind of just like happens while I'm doing other things. It's pretty weird. Um, things kind of just hit me. I don't know if that's just how my brain works or if everybody's like that, but I started thinking about Writing being thinking, that sometimes writing is thinking. And so that's kind of my first tip is take the time to think stuff out. Because even though it may not feel like it because you're not physically sitting at a computer typing, you're still being productive when you're thinking through your writing. And so I know everybody's writing process is different, but for me, I need to think through a scene. If I'm just sitting at my computer and I'm staring at it and I'm like, where do I go from here? Um, I'm not very productive. But the flip side of that is like yesterday when I was in the shower, I started thinking through this specific, uh, specific scene in the book that I'm currently working on, the first book in the series that I'm working on, and it just hit me. I was like, oh my gosh, okay, she needs this type of moment because she's very serious and my main character, she's very serious and she's a mother and, but she wasn't always that way. She, you know, had her wild side when she was younger and things like that. And so it kind of just hit me that I was like, she really needs to find that piece of herself. She needs to kind of reconnect with that person um, as part of her growth. And so I started thinking, okay, how can I make that happen? You know, and this scene came to me and I, I talked it out while I was in the shower. I wasn't writing anything. I still have to come and sit down and write it. But I was like, okay, you know, this character's gonna walk up, they're gonna say this, she's gonna respond like this. So I'm actually speaking out this dialogue 
which people would probably think I was crazy if they saw me because I'm talking to myself as <laughs> multiple characters. Um, but then it makes it so much easier for me to just come in my office and sit down and write that out because it's been kind of step by step spoken and, and thought about. Um, the other day in my truck, I was driving home from town and something very similar happened to me where I was like, okay, this is a scene that they need. This needs to be there. Um, and same thing, kind of talking out that dialogue and what is that going to look like and all of that. And so sometimes it's easy to get caught up in, you know, I'm not writing. I'm not where I want to be with word count. I'm not, you know, being productive. But you do have to give yourself time to think. And so that's really my first tip. Um, if you're looking to write more, take time to think. And like, so maybe that's sitting by yourself. Maybe it's while you're doing dishes. Maybe it's like me in the shower while you're driving in the truck. Whatever the case may be. Um, but recognize, recognize that you're working in those moments. Those are productive moments. And, and give yourself m moments like that to kind of process your story. Because if you're just staring at your screen um, and you kind of have this tunnel vision and it's words, 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 um, you know, you do. You need to step back and you need to kind of look at it again from the big picture and reevaluate where am I going? How am I going to get there? So writing is thinking. Don't feel bad if you're taking time to think. Um, and think through some of those things. And for me, like I said, I talk through a lot of, of my scenes in my books. It helps me with dialogue that doesn't sound awkward. It helps me think about body movement. And I've mentioned this before. And so I'd recommend that as well if you're struggling with writing a specific scene. Um, talk it out, out loud. When you hear something, it's different when you read than when you read it. And so... Um, keep that in mind as well. Writing is thinking. Talk out some of those scenes if you, if you need to. I'm going to stick this on there before we do the next one because I started peeling it off. It says, read books, change the world. I liked it because it was purple. Purple is my favorite color. Um, hmm, where do I want it is the question. Um, second thing that I wanted to talk about is that your environment matters when you're writing. It matters. And so I've seen so many people, so many authors that can like sit in their bed with the blankets and have their laptop on their lap or, um, you know, they got a big comfy chair or they're on their couch. And I love that for them. I think that's amazing that they can do that. I cannot. I cannot write like that. And so for me, and I don't I don't know if it's just how many years I've been in school. I was in school a long time. <laughs> um, and undergrad and grad school, I read a lot and I and I wrote a lot. And my environments were very strict. You know, if I wasn't in a classroom, I was in like the library or I'd rent rooms in the library or I had a desk in my apartment. Um, and so it may just be that I've kind of trained myself to work that way. Um, but regardless, your environment's important and knowing what environment works for you is really important whenever you're writing. So for me, I write most of the time in my office, right here at my desk. My husband bought me this desk. It's amazing. Um, I'll do an office tour one of these days, but it's huge. It takes up like an entire wall in my office. Um, it has bookshelves on both sides, drawers on both sides on the bottom. It's amazing. Um, but I have my computers on it. He got me this chair, which I really like. And I have to be sitting up and my laptop has to be on something. In this case, my desk. I never write with my laptop in my lap. Um, 
And this works great for me. If, if the, you know, uh, day allows for me to sit in here and write, that's what I do. Sometimes I sit at my dining room table. Again, computer's on the table. I'm sitting in a chair upright. Um, if I'm, you know, need to be out there with my son or whatever, a lot of times I'll just leave my door open. You can't see my floor, but it's covered in dinosaurs and Paw Patrol toys. Because a lot of times he hangs out in here with me while I write and he'll play or whatever. And that works good for us. If he wants to play outside, we have a table on our porch and chairs. And I put my laptop on the table and I sit on the porch chairs and do it that way. Um, occasionally we have like a um, like an awning on our back porch. And there's like a wood platform that goes across it. And I'll, I will set my laptop up there once in a while and stand if my son's playing in the backyard. Um, but yeah, I'm never like in what somebody would consider a comfortable position when I'm writing. <laughs> so, but it works really well for me and I get a lot done and I'm super productive and I think it is just that mind space of like, I'm working right now. Um, and I just know my personality and if I tried to do this on the couch or in my bed, it'd be game over there. <laughs> I would end up watching like Netflix or something. Um, the only real exception to me sitting on my couch is if my husband is like, come sit with me. And he doesn't even care what I'm doing. He's just like, you know, he's been at work all day and he's like, come hang out. So he'll watch TV, usually a hunting show. And we have these like um, wooden, stands that you can like put in front of you on the couch for eating or whatever um and I will put one of those in front of me on the couch but I will sit on the end of the couch so that I'm not like leaning back and I can type like that um computer still not in my lap I'm still not like laid back but he'll watch tv all right and that's really the only time I'm sitting on my couch writing so find the environment that works for you. If you're a person that can do it, um, regardless of where you're at, you know, if you're like, oh, I could prop my laptop in my lap and I can write on my couch in my bed, I can write, you know, on the floor, whatever, great. And like I said, I'm jealous of those people. If you're more like me and you have to have kind of like that stricter environment, um, just know that about yourself and set yourself up for that. You'll be a lot more successful. The other thing with environment, and I've talked about this before, is noise. Because some people can write and listen to music, which I've said before, I rarely listen to music. If I listen to music while I'm writing, it is one song specific to that book on repeat. That's just what works for me. Um, what I can also do, and I don't think I've talked about this before, is sometimes I will watch stuff while I write, but I never watch anything I haven't seen before. And so I have two laptops, so I'll write on one and I'll have something pulled up on the other. But I always pick something I've seen, a movie I've seen, a show I've seen, whatever. So I'm not like super listening to it. Um, I'm, I'm not afraid like, oh, I'm gonna miss something important. Uh, no, usually I'm putting something on that I've seen probably 50 plus times. Uh, and it's more just like background noise. And so that's something that I do. I can't do that with music. Um, music is too influential for me. I really, really love music a lot. And I love listening to lyrics. And I love the way music tells a story. But I, it influences my writing depending on like what music is on. And so that's why I said if I listen to anything, it's one specific song chosen for that book for specific reasons. And I listen to it on repeat so that the mood of the book doesn't change. Because I know that music influences my mood, which then influences my writing. And so that's why I either keep it off or I have one song that... I listen to again and again. Um, but with 
shows, movies, it's not that way. I think it's because, like I said, it's stuff I've seen a million times. I'm throwing on, like, an episode of Bones or, um, you know, my big fat Greek wedding or whatever. Something I've seen a lot. And so it just doesn't have that same kind of pool for me emotionally. And, like I said, it's mostly background noise at that point. Um, other things to think about if you, you know, like having a drink or whatever I do, I bring in my water bottle or coffee or tea or whatever I'm drinking. Um, I don't really eat well. I'm writing. Sometimes I'll like take a break from writing and sit and eat in my office. Um, so I can eat and then kind of go right back to it. But I don't really eat and type at the same time. Again, that kind of stricter environment. Um, but find the environment that works for you and then set yourself up that environment. Um, make it happen, you know. Turn on the music or the show or the movie. Um, find the place that you know you can sit if it's an office or your couch or wherever. Um, have your drink or don't if you're not into that. A snack, whatever the case may be. Chewing gum. Um, I don't know what it is for you. But find the environment that that really speaks to you and really kind of capitalize on that because you'll write more words that way. Um, but that's something I've been thinking about a lot is, is environment and setting that up. And so hopefully you know what that is for you. If not, I would suggest trying different things and, and figuring out what it is that works. Timing is part of environment. I know people that can get up really early and write and that is their best time. Um, some people like to stay up really late and write, you know, through the night. And then they're going to bed at 2, 3 in the morning. Um, but that's what works for them. So find what works for you. Moms, specifically moms. Um, because we're kind of a little bit different because our schedule isn't just us. Our schedule depends on kiddos. Um, I've talked about this before, but work your writing schedule around your kids' schedule. Uh, I'm home with my son. He's here right now while I'm recording this. Um, but I'm still able to record it. It's quiet. Um, you know, so find those moments in your day where you're like, okay, I have 10 or 15 minutes or an hour or whatever it is. Um, and sometimes those change, you know. Some days my son's super good in the morning and I can get a lot done. Sometimes in the morning he wants me to sit with him and hang out and hold him and I don't get anything done until the afternoon. Um, so as parents, I think we have to be a little more flexible with our schedules. <laughs> Um, but you can still definitely find those moments and that those those times where maybe it's not the best time for you. Maybe you really are a morning rider or a night rider and you're having to switch or whatever to match up with your kids. Um, but once you kind of get into that routine, it works. It works. I have recognized that about myself where I'm like, okay, he's taking care of let's go do this and I will write until he comes in and he's like, you know, mommy this or that and then we go from there. Um, so timing is important too. The, that which brings me to the last thing I really want to talk about is specifically for parents or, you know, people with outside things, um, if it's a full-time job or whatever. I've done a video before about writing as a mom. But I think it's an important thing to continue to talk about because we have goals, right? As moms, we have things we want to accomplish. And I think that's amazing. And I think it's great. But it is hard. It's really hard when you have kids, especially young kids. My son is three and I'm pregnant with another one. Um... I don't know if it's a son. That kind of sounded like it was. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it is harder because everything you do kind of revolves around them and the things they need to do. And so that's my third kind of tip is the fact that moms, 
people in general, um, we're not machines, okay? And so it's, it's so easy to start feeling guilty or feeling like you're not doing enough when in reality you are doing enough. You are doing enough. Um, and it's easy to compare yourself to other people. And I do that a lot. I try really hard not to. Really hard not to. But I do. <laughs> and I see these young young writers. I'm not old. I'm young-ish. <laughs> I'm 29. But I, I compare myself to them and everything they're doing. And it's funny because then, you know, you look at things and you're like, okay but they're 10 years younger than me, or they don't have any kids, or they're not married, or they're not working, like, outside of writing. So there's all these things, or the flip side of that, you know? Oh, I've, I've been in this, it'll be a year in October, which is no time at all. A year is nothing, if you think about it. Um, and it's like, oh, they've been in this 10 years or 15 years. Obviously, they have 25 or 30 or 50 books out. Um, and so, just all those things. And if I think about like, okay, October will be a year that I've started this journey. In that time, I've published three books along with a lot of other things. Part of that, I was working full time. Um had my son, had my husband, we have pets. So I think it's easy to get caught up in that, right? Of, of comparing where you're at in your journey to other people's journeys. And specifically looking at it as the perspective of a mom, it's even more so sometimes because you're also thinking about, you know, am I balancing this? Am I doing everything I can do for me and my business and what I want it to be, but still being a good mom and being a good wife or a good girlfriend or good whatever you are, just a mom if you're a single mom. Um, whatever the case may be, I feel like parents a lot of times have that doubt in their head of, am I doing everything I can do? Uh, and so I wanted to talk about that a little bit too because there's only so much. There's only so much we can do as human beings and and as parents and as people who are trying to um you know start and establish these small businesses and so just know that you know know that going in and there could be people out there comparing themselves to you <laughs> you know and so i think it's a very like normal thing for humans to do but it's also something where you need to recognize like, oh, that's what I'm doing and I need to take a step back because this journey is my own and I'm going to, you know, do things at my pace and what works for me. And so that's kind of tip number three because I feel like that can definitely affect your writing um, if you're constantly doing that. And so if... You find yourself in a place where you really are making a lot of comparisons. Uh, I would encourage you to try to step back from that because it will affect your writing. Um, if you start doubting yourself, if you start, you know, questioning what you're doing. Focus on you. Focus on you. Focus on your goals. Focus on what it is you want. Um, and that's it. You know, support other writers 100%. You know, watch their YouTube channels. Follow them on social media. Um, reach out to them when they're doing cool stuff. I think that supporting other authors and other, you know, self-published indie authors is amazing. I 100% recommend you to do that. You can learn a ton from them. Um, but that's not the same. That's not the same as, as comparing yourself to them or... Um, you know, trying to sort of mimic what it is that they're doing. And so focus on you, set your own goals, um, you know, worry about what you're at, worry or where you're at and what you're doing. Um, and leave it at that, you know, <laughs> and 
<laughs> so those are my tips. If you're trying to improve your writing um, that are not really writing tips, but they are in a sense, uh, first thing is just to got sticker sidetracked uh, <laughs> is to remember that writing is thinking. Take time to think. Recognize that your environment matters. Find what works for you. And realize that as people, as moms, as, you know, people pursuing writing that have other things in their life, you're not a machine. Um, and just focus on you and what you're doing and your goals. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. And support others. Support others because that also will help your writing. That was not on my list, but it is the truth. It will help your writing um, if you're supporting other indie authors, if you're hopping in on their writing sprints or their live streams. Um, that also helps you to be productive. It helps you build that support system. And so that would be kind of my bonus. My bonus tip is involve yourself in the community as much as you can. So if you have tips for ways writers can improve their writing, even if it's not necessarily like writing related, which most of mine were not, let me know. Um, send them in the comments or reach out to me on Instagram. I'd love to hear your guys' tips and things that you do that work for you, if it's how you set up your environment or whatever the case may be. Definitely let me know. I have two more stickers big ones I'll probably find some little ones that I can stick around on here uh... I thought it was gonna bubble <laughs> I was like don't bubble Cause then I'd probably rip it. It does have like a, I don't, it's like a string or something. I'll have to pull that off of there. <laughs> I think this one needs to go like above that. And maybe I'll find some small ones that can fit on here. Peeling these off was a lot easier with my nails than I thought it would be. Ooh, that one kind of creased. Uh oh. Let's see if we can save it. We did! <laughs> cool! I like it. It looks really good. They're all reading related stickers and so there's that. Like I said, I'll probably go in with like some smaller ones on these blank pieces, but so far so good. Alright! Happy Thursday! Remember to love yourself. Remember to believe in yourself. And just keep moving forward. Whatever you're doing is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Trust in that. Trust your process. And I will see you guys soon. Have a great week and weekend.